Good morning everyone. محاضرتنا اليوم عبارة عن two parts. Part one talk about infection control that include sterilization, surgeon and patient preparation. Part two includes some practical points such as chair position, surgeon position and the rule of the opposite hand during extraction. Regarding the instrument sterilization, we have three techniques, dry heat, moist heat, and ethylene oxide gas. Sterilization of instruments is achieved in steel containers which have holes so that the steam may pass through during sterilization, or the instruments are wrapped in drops directly or packed in surgical pouches. After sterilization, all instruments and materials that are to be used for surgical procedure are arranged on the tray of the dental engine or surgery tray. After, sterile drops are placed to cover the surface. بالنسبة لأول تكنيك اللي هو dry heat أو الأوفن اللي موجود بالعيادات تعقيم الأدوات بهذه الطريقة يتأثر بعدة عوامل أولا الـ warm up time أو الوقت اللي نحتاجه حتى تصعد الحرارة للمستوى المطلوب للـ sterilization ثانيا الـ heat conductivity of materials أو قابلية توصيل الحرارة للمواد المراد تعقيمها بالإضافة إلى الـ air flow بداخل الأوفن حتى توصل الحرارة لكل الـ instruments أو الـ materials اللي نريد نعقمها The advantages of dry heat technique easy to use and not damaging heat resistance instruments يعني كل الـ instruments اللي تتحمل حرارة نقدر نعقمها بالأوفن الـ disadvantages للـ dry heat هو long time ياخذ وقت and damaging to heat sensitive يعني الـ materials أو الـ instruments المصنوعة من البلاستيك ما نقدر نعقمها بالأوفن ثاني تكنيك هي المويست هيت واللي تكون مور افكتف ذان دراي هيت لان بالمويست هيت تحتاج حراره اقل من الدراي هيت وتحتاج وقت اقل للستريلايزيشن بسبب انه مبدا المويست هيت هو البويلنج ووتر والبويلنج ووتر ياخذ وقت اقصر تو كول ذا مايكرو اورجانيزمز ذان دراي هيت بيكوز ووتر از بيتر ذان اير فور ترانسفيرنج هيت اضافه الى ان المويست هيت يحتاج وقت اقصر تو كونفيرت بويلنج ووتر تو ستيم عندنا two types of moist heat أما يكون under pressure أو نسميه autoclave أو non-pressurized طبعا الستيم under pressure يكون more effective than non-pressurized instrument placed into an autoclave should be packaged in sterilization pouches or wrapping in gluten cloth الستريلايزيشن باوتشز تجي رولات نخلي بيها الانسترومنتس نقطعها ونكبسها وافتر استريلايزيشن تبقى الانسترومنت داخل الباوتشز لحين الاستعمال حتى نتاكد انه الستريلايزيشن تم داخل الباوتشز البسرد ستريلايزيشن باوتشز بي انديكيتر مثلا بلو لاين من يدخل الاوتو كليف ويكتمل الستريلايزيشن يتحول هذا البلو لاين الى بلاك لاين Moist heat can be some disadvantages. For example, tendency to moist heat to dull and rust instrument. لأن يحتوي على water فالinstrument راح تكون معرضة لrust. And the cost of the autoclave. دائما الautoclave يكون أغلى سعرا من الأوفن. Simply placing instruments in boiling water or free flowing steam results in disinfection rather than sterilization. يعني لما نقول مثلا نفور الانسترومنت بمي يوصل هو درجة الغليان صحيح 100 درجة لكن هذه الطريقة نسميها disinfection ما نسميها sterilization because at the temperature of 100 centigrade many spores and certain viruses survive يعني بهاي الطريقة قسم من السبورات أو بكتيريا والقسم من الفيروسز ما راح نقدر نسيطر عليها بطريقة التعقيم هذه Now about sterilization by gas that used in sterilization of heat sensitive instrument such as plastic or metal instrument that are not heat resistant. Also this technique used for porous materials, large equipment and surgery center. 
Disadvantages of this technique need for special equipment and the time necessary after sterilization. تحتاج وقت بعد الاستريلازيشن للتهوية حتى نقلل من التوكسيسيتي because ethylene oxide is a toxic gas. Now we will talk about instrument disinfection. إذا عدنا heat sensitive instrument يعني ما نقدر نعقمها by dry heat و by moist heat وما عدنا بنفس الوقت sterilization with gas. بهالحالة نحتاج لل disinfection by chemical agents. Chemical agents with potential disinfectant ability have been classified into high, intermediate, and low biocidal activity. A low biocidal activity effective against vegetative bacteria and lipid viruses. Intermediate effective against all microbes except bacterial spores. A high activity are biocidal for all microbes. Many substances are used in disinfection such as glutaraldehyde, iodoform, chlorine, or formaldehyde. The alcohol may be disinfectant because of rapid evaporation. The disinfection with these substances lazim nitbaq bi adat shurut. Awal shi the container of disinfectant solution lazim yitbaddel wa yitnadaf bi istimrar. Wal instrument lazim tibqa waqt kafi bi disinfectant solution. Wa bi hada waqt may sair nadif contaminated instruments. بالإضافة إلى أن الانسترومنت لازم تنغسل من البلاط زين يلا نخليها بالدسinfected solution وأخيرا بعد ما نطلع الانسترومنت من الدسinfected solution لازم نغسلها زين يعني must be rinsed free of chemicals Now regarding the operatory disinfection, that mean any surfaces that patients or patient secretion contact. The operatory can be disinfected in two basic ways. The first is to wipe all surfaces with disinfectant solution or cover surfaces with protective shields that are changed between each patient. Also, dental chair can be sprayed with disinfectant solution. About the surgical staff preparation, hands and forearm must be washed with antiseptic soup from all dispensers. يعني بالرغم من إنه راح نلبس gloves, بس the washing hands is very important. لأنه مثلاً أثناء استعمال the high speed drills أو the fixation wire ممكن يصير perforation لل gloves وصير our hands in contact with the wound. Gloves should be sterile and put on using an appropriate technique to maintain sterility of external surface. طريقة لبس السيرجيكال gloves مثل ما موضحة بالصور تعلمناها بالعيادة السابقة إلها طريقة خاصة حتى نحافظ على sterility of its external surface واللي راح تكون contact with the wound. The first glove is held by the left hand by the cuff and is placed on the right hand while the second glove is held held by its exterior surface by a gloved hand and placed on the left. The dental staff may wear clean street clothing covered by long-sleeved laboratory coats or surgical gown. Another option is a dental uniform or surgical scrubs with no further covering or covered by a long-sleeved surgical gown. In general, eye protection should be worn when blood or saliva are dispersed, such as when high-speed cutting equipment is used. A face mask should be used whenever aerosols are created or a surgical wound is to be made. If the surgeon has long hair, it is essential that the hair be held in position and be covered with a surgical cap. Also, the surgical staff must remove all accessories and the name badge. Now, we will talk about the preparation of patients. Number one, the skin around the mouth is first disinfected with gauze soaked in antiseptic solution such as povidone iodine 1% solution. 
Also, the mucosa of the oral cavity is disinfected and the oral cavity may be prepared by brushing or rinsing with the chlorexidine gluconate mouthwash. The patient is then covered with sterile drops to protect the patient's clothes, to keep objects from accidentally entering the patient's eyes, and to decrease suture contamination. وعرفنا بالعيادة السابقة إنه نستعمل three drops. واحد من عندهم يقعد على the headrest of the chair, والثاني at the head of the patient, والثالثة على the chest of the patient. To prevent teeth or fragments of teeth from falling into the patient's mouth and potentially being swallowed or aspirated into the lungs, many surgeons prefer to place a partially unfolded gauze loosely into the back of the mouth. During an oral surgical procedure, only sterile water or sterile saline solution should be used to irrigate open wounds. The second part in this lecture is about the chair position, surgeon position, and the rule of the opposite hand during extraction. We will start with chair position for extraction. The dental chair must be comfortable for the patient and surgeon, allows the surgeon to have maximal control of the force that is being delivered to the patient's tooth through the elevators and the forceps. Correct position allows the surgeon to keep the arm close to the body and provides stability and support. The most common error dentists make in positioning the dental chair for extraction, such as have the chair too high. This forces the surgeons to operate with their shoulders raised, thereby making it difficult to deliver the correct amount of force to the tooth being extracted in the proper manner. It is also tiring for the surgeon. Or put his or her face close to the patient's mouth. This interferes with the surgical lighting, is hard on the dentist's back and neck, and also interferes with the proper positioning of the rest of the dentist's body. For a maxillary extraction, the chair should be tipped backward so that the occlusal plane is at angle of about 45 to 60 degrees to the floor. The height of the chair should be such that the patient's mouth is at the level between the operator's elbow and shoulder. For the extraction of mandibular teeth, the patient should be positioned in a more upright position, so that when the mouth is opened wide, the occlusal plane is parallel to the floor. The height of the chair should be such that the patient's mouth is at or slightly below the operator elbow level. Regarding the surgeon's position for extraction, dentists usually stand during extraction, allows the surgeon to keep the wrist straight enough to deliver the force with the arm and shoulder and not with the fingers or hand. During an operation on maxillary right quadrant and maxillary left quadrant, Right-handed dentists should stand in front of and to the right of the patient, while left-handed dentists should be in front of and to the left of the patient. During an operation on the mandibular left quadrant, the right-handed surgeon should stand in front of the patient. During an operation on the mandibular right quadrant, the right-handed surgeon should stand behind the patient. During an operation on the mandibular left quadrant, the left-handed surgeon should stand behind of the patient, while during an operation on the mandibular right quadrant, the left-handed surgeon should stand in front of the patient. Now regarding the rule of the opposite hand, the opposite hand is used for reflecting the soft tissue of the cheek, lips, and the tongue to provide adequate vision of the area of surgery and protect other teeth from the forceps should it release suddenly from the tooth socket. Also, it stabilizes the patient's head during the extraction process. 
Also, the opposite hand is playing a role in supporting and stabilizing the jaw when mandibular teeth are being extracted. The opposite hand is often necessary to apply considerable pressure to expand heavy mandibular bone, and such forces can cause discomfort and even injury to the TM joint unless a steady hand counteract them. Also, the opposite hand supports the alveolar process and provides tactile information to the operator concerning the expansion of the alveolar process during the luxation period. Now, how to use the opposite hand? During an operation on the maxillary left quadrant and maxillary anterior area for right-handed surgeon, the index finger of the opposite hand used for reflection of cheek or lip, while the thumb of the opposite hand put on the palate. During an operation on maxillary right quadrant for right-handed surgeon, the thumb finger of opposite hand used for reflection of cheek, while the index finger of opposite hand put on the palate. During an operation on the maxillary left quadrant and maxillary anterior area for left-handed surgeon, the thumb finger of opposite hand used for reflection of cheek or lip while the index of opposite hand put on the palate. During an operation on maxillary right quadrant for left-handed surgeon, the index finger of opposite hand used for reflection of cheek while the thumb finger of opposite hand put on the palate. During an operation on the mandibular left quadrant and mandibular anterior area for right-handed surgeon, the index finger of opposite hand used for reflection of the tongue while the thumb of the opposite hand used for reflection of cheek or lip and another fingers are used to support the mandible. Or the index finger of opposite hand used for reflection of cheek or lip the middle finger of the opposite hand used for reflection of the tongue, while the thumb of the opposite hand put under the mandible for support. During an operation on mandibular right quadrant for right-handed surgeon, with the opposite hand placed around the patient's head, the thumb finger of the opposite hand used for reflection of the tongue, while the index finger of opposite hand used for reflection of the cheek, the other three fingers of opposite hand put under the mandible for support. During an operation on the mandibular right quadrant and mandibular anterior area for left-handed surgeon, the index finger of opposite hand used for reflection of the tongue, while the thumb of the opposite hand used for reflection of the cheek or lip, and other fingers are used for support the mandible. Or we can use the index finger of opposite hand for reflection of cheek or lip, the middle finger of opposite hand used for reflection of the tongue, while the thumb of the opposite hand put under the mandible for support. During an operation on mandibular left quadrant for left-handed surgeon, with the opposite hand placed around the patient's head, the thumb finger of opposite hand used for reflection of the tongue, while the index finger of the opposite hand used for reflection of the cheek, the other three fingers of the opposite hand put under the mandible for support. هاي المحاضرة من تقروها يا ريت لو تفتحون وياها الباوربوينت حتى من تشوفون الصور تتوضح عندكم أكثر وبالنسبة للليفت هاند دينتست احتفظوا بهذه المحاضرة لأن ما راح تلقون محاضرة ولا كتاب تحكي عن الليفت هاند دينتست بس لقيت كتاب واحد أخذته كمصدر لهذا الموضوع thanks for your attention and goodbye